I know you brought some cases. Uh, let's let's see if we can screen share and take a look at them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is what I was referring to when I was talking earlier is the cheat sheet that we use for all the different types of filters. And then we actually have a little kind of protocol kind of cheat sheet guide that all our trainees use that I was referring to. But this is, this is images of all the filters that we generally see in consults. So the first case is a 58-year-old female, a history of subarachnoid bleed, filter placed in 2013, presents with chronic DVT. She had swelling in one of the extremities. Basically, this is an evaluation for removal. I think this was referred from one of our colleagues at um, in cardiology because uh, just given the type of filter, which I'll show you in a second. We did have a pre-op CT, which I didn't show, that showed it was actually a Greenfield filter, which was a little questionable because it was placed in 2013. I'm not sure we should be placing Greenfield, or they were being placed in yeah. 2013. So that was just a, maybe the history was, the timing was off a little bit. But so when we see a filter like this, again, I you know, it's a Greenfield filter. Uh, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be tilted. I do the three projections, which is the AP and the two obliquities. This is one of the obliquities here. Uh, and you know, this type of filter, I know we're not going to be able to use kind of our simple technique. Actually, you know, as I said earlier, I, I know it's scarred in, I'm going straight to forceps. So I get my large sheath in place, 18 French by 45 centimeter from the neck. And I go straight to forceps. As I said, we have a curved forceps that's going right afterwards. So again, just very fine movements. And I was, it's an important technique point that you want to unsheath your forceps. You don't want to just send your forceps out. Uh, just to make sure you don't perforate or things like that. But once you get it to the level of where the top of the hook is, that's where you want to keep it, and that's where you're starting to maneuver it. The whole goal, obviously, is to maneuver it so we can get onto the top of the uh, onto the top of the filter right there. Uh, and then once you and as I said, this is this is really a tactile feel. Like once I'm feeling where that filter is, once you know you grab onto that hook, that's where you're sheathing that filter. Yeah. In this case. Uh, it kind of went really fast at that point. But in this case, a lot of the force, and there's actually really good articles that Will Co and the Stanford group put out actually demonstrating the amount of force it takes to uh, really sheath that filter, especially at, at this point where you see these hooks at the uh, bottom of the filter. So you're just pulling at this point really hard and hoping it yeah. comes in. And in this case, it came pretty smooth. So this is a straightforward forceps case. Yeah, one of my... Uh, program director, well, my program director of Vanderbilt said it's kind of like, I mean, the force of like, you know, starting a lawnmower basically, like you're, you're yeah. yanking at that point and, and don't be afraid to, because that's what it requires. And he's exactly. right. He's right. Yeah. And I think you alluded to it earlier. You want to make sure that the angle is straight and you have a good straight thing. Cause you don't want to obviously push at an angle that potentially could just right. pop through the side, which. Right. People have done so. <laughs> it yeah. happens. So. Key thing is pull, not push, right? Exactly. You, yeah. Exactly. 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 This is that companion. This is what I was talking about, the inversion. Again, I don't like to advertise it, but I love it because it's so, it, it sounds worrisome, but, you know, for example, a filter is tilted, either it's tilted to the right or left. That allows you to determine which way to put your sheath up from the left groin to the right groin because you literally can put your sheath. This is a, this is that Medtronic sheath I was talking about. So it's a really nice sheath. It's a, it's a stent graft sheath. And you literally put it right into the cone of the fill, like to the bottom, <laughs> you know, the top, the apex of the filter. And then you unsheath your forceps. You grab the, uh, you grab the top of the filter and it literally flips right into it. And it it's usually pretty, uh, pretty quick that it flips into wow. one piece. So that's, that's nice. That, incredible. Yeah. That's the post though. Next case is... How uh, did you decide on that, like, jumping to that? It, it, had you already tried from above? Yeah, usually um, usually I've tried from the above, and for some reason or another, even despite curving the uh, forceps, you know, for some reason I'm just, it's just requiring a lot of time, and I see it so tilted to the point that, you know, I can get a sheath right into the apex of it, and it'll come right out, you know what I mean? Just yeah. based on my look. So that's when I usually switch to it, um, to switch to this. Uh, this was a lady, actually, she had two filters, 50-year-old, um, history of lupus, multiple thromboembolic events, two filters placed, 2011, 2014. One of them was a select, again, this is a spot image, select at the top, and then you have your uh, trapeze at the bottom. You don't see a hook here. She was chronically occluded. This is from the yeah. right. This is from the left. So in these cases, you want to you make sure you get wire access across whenever you're doing your work. 
uh, you're prepared to, in this case, I was, I have a sheath from above and below, you know, initial plan is potentially things I think about is, okay, am I going to go straight to forceps? Am I going to try to grab up here with like a hangman, grab from here from a hangman? Um, you can see the orientation of where this was, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously it's a little, I think I tried it to do a hangman. It was just getting to be difficult. And then I switched to, uh, forceps. This was a run, uh, before. So, so in this case, actually I ended up going straight to forceps. And the thing about these trapeze filters is if they've been in for a while, if they don't have chronic clot in them, they, uh, can break up pretty easily. So in this case, it ended up breaking up. She was chronically occluded afterwards, which ended up ballooning and then stenting across. Uh, and you could see the post flow that occurred here and that she had. So, so it looked like a tulip or something from a, uh, the top one. Um, uh, top yeah, filter. It, it, that yeah, just came out used, easily or? Yeah, that came no. out. I used forceps from the top as well. Again, yeah. I'm just highlighting my love for forceps here, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that just came out pretty quick. Um, That's great. Afterwards, so. And a great result. Um, and then the last, those were the two filters again. Your, Oof, your, I gosh, can't. I would... <laughs> this broke up in a bunch of pieces. Th- this is a just quickly show. This is a laser case, and this is this was a patient that we actually was referred for adrenal vein sampling, and obviously the filter was in the way um, to do the yeah. adrenal vein sampling. So we we wanted to take the filter out before she actually had an attempted removal at an outside hospital before. So knowing before we didn't have any imaging. We go through the imaging. There's, you know, there's a contrast image. This is there's no clot within the filter, but this was, I believe, a select filter that we knew from this CT that the hook was in the middle of the IVC. So at this, this is what I was talking about earlier. I know that I could potentially go straight to laser in this case, knowing that someone had a difficult time before. You see the struts extending outside yeah. the IVC, right? Yeah. So you know that this is probably going to be a difficult case. That I, you know, potentially, I'm just going to go straight to. Uh, obviously, I'm going to try with a snare, see how hard it is to take out. Uh, so I was able to grasp it uh, with a snare. I actually want to credit one of my colleagues. I did this with one of my colleagues. It was his patient that we did it together. So grasped it with a snare, as you see here. And then this is the laser sheath right here um, that's grabbed. Uh, let me pause it here. So this is the laser sheath right here. Okay. Um, and you're kind of, as I said, you're slowly tracking the laser down with your outer dissector sheath uh, in a stepwise fashion. And usually when you get, you you first pull on the snare, uh, pull on the filter with your snare, get to the point where you feel resistance and that's where you start, start with the laser. Here, okay. again, this came out super quick. It was within, I think, a minute. Once you start and get the laser going and then it, you pull it with your tension, it just pops right out. So it's nice. So Yeah, it almost looked like it was, it broke through where the, at the middle of the filter and then the, str- the actual hooks came out pretty easily, which correct. Yeah, did exactly. you find that's think, usually the case? Or? Yeah, no, that's it's that's a good, that's a great point. Usually the the tissue is down here where uh, where the hooks the are hooks are embedded. Yeah, but yeah. in this case, I mean, it couldn't be anywhere where the tissue forms. You know, in this case, I think the, all the tissue was basically at this point right here. So, and then the last case, <laughs> this was a this was a case where you know, it was a. Opti's filter that had broken um, struts within it. And when I think about this, again, I'm thinking if I can get a uh, hangman or a snare around these two sides, then I could then use laser, laser and or forceps in that situation, either forceps from the top to grasp and laser from the other side. And that's essentially what we did. We actually ended up, were able to get out with the um, hangman technique with sauce around it. And this was, uh, you actually, sorry, you don't see it here in this picture at bottom here, this was actually the laser uh, sheath and this was the outer dissector. Uh, but we we were able to get this out by using laser and then uh, dissector all from one axis. So we didn't actually have to grab it from the top, essentially, so. Wow. So that's this here. So again, you wanna be prepared for everything, but yeah, y- y- you can, uh, things will obviously change up in the middle of the case, whether it's, uh, whether you're, you only have to use one side, whether it's the groin or the neck, or you have to use both sides or what have you. So yeah. Or rent. Have you had, if you're had to do like bilateral groin and neck, you know, just sort of like three, three, cause that, that, that very complex one where you ended up stenting, that looked like almost, it was yeah. like the trapeze was even angled towards the left iliac. Yeah. But you were still able to pull it from the right iliac, which was pretty, 
pretty exactly incredible. yeah in that case i think it was just so i have access with my wire um through that just mm-hmm. in case things got hairy and it, there's a yeah. bleed and yeah. uh you know just to make sure that you maintain access in that chronic uh collusive got state it. basically so got it yeah well, Nora, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show and sharing your expertise, and thank you for sharing these cases. I'm um, looking forward to hanging out next week. All right. Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it. It was great.